Over and over again, we can attribute increasing intensity of storms to climate change and intensity and timing of storms influences avalanche dangers. So how that actually manifests in any given season is really hard to say, but we do know it's happening and that patterns in the mountains are changing. So we get snowfall that builds up in the mountains from individual storms and the snow from those individual storms usually bonds to each other. And that, that's great. That makes a stable snowpack. But uh, worrisome conditions arrive when the, some sort of layer forms in between those snowfall events. So you get an early season snowfall, that shallow snow layer sits at the surface and it forms grains that are resistant to bonding to each other. And so then when you get more frequent storms, it's falling on this layer that has no strength and no cohesion. And so it's the, it's the perfect recipe for big avalanches. Or when conditions happen where liquid water gets into the snowpack and actually breaks those bonds, then we can get something called a wet slide. And those two types of avalanches are being impacted differently by changing weather patterns and warming. You know, the impacts of climate change on avalanche cycles is real, but the details of uh, what they are and how they manifest are unclear. Avalanches are driven by weather events, and um, there's a lot of research about climate change and its impacts on uh, not just the, the climate, but, uh, but weather events themselves. A good example is the really large avalanche cycle that we saw in 2019. This avalanche cycle that happened in the first two weeks of March, and we saw, you know, 100 to 300 year events. What triggered it was um, essentially a series of atmospheric river events. In Salt Lake City in the mountains here, you know, last year we had uh, two months where we had no snow at all. And then this year, we've just had storm after storm after storm with all of these atmospheric rivers coming off of the Pacific Ocean. And so neither one of those are what we would consider quote unquote normal conditions. Atmospheric rivers are really less defined as you go uh, inland to someplace like Colorado, but, but these were events that penetrated deep into the continent and brought uh, these really moisture laden uh, precipitation events to us because that mid-pack layer was so strong and we had these big walloping wet storms on top of them and a series of them. Uh, when things broke, they broke catastrophically. Rain on snow events is, is something that in Colorado, like traditionally we have not really had to worry about too much, but um, certainly within the last 10 years, we're starting to see those with more uh, frequency. And, you know, when you're putting liquid water into a dry snowpack, um, you can see some pretty devastating avalanche conditions. Snow is declining and will continue to decline over time, so the amount of area that people will have to recreate in will also decline over time, sort of forcing more and more people into these zones. So to have uh, human involvement in avalanches, you only need two things, avalanches and people. More often than not, these these avalanches that end up in uh, injury or death are triggered by the skiers themselves that are accessing the terrain. You know, when we put more people into the backcountry, uh, if the avalanche conditions stay the same, you're going to have more involvement. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.